but what I noticed is that um, what I felt like is that our voice is not always taken seriously and that young people are not always represented. And when we are represented at the, at the highest level, then it's often this, let's say, the, the one person of the pyramid. So those who have a good education, who are coming from a developed country, um, this, people like me, you know? So, and I felt like, well, if you look at the world's population and how the, the, the youth demographics are divided, then actually 95% of us is not living in a situation like me and many others. So I thought like, okay, if we're not talking about a new agenda, post 2015, leaving no one behind, then um, I felt it was necessary to include the voice of young people from all walks of life. Not only those who had this, this spare opportunity or the, belong to the one person. So then uh, I start looking into opportunities to see like, okay, how can we do this? Because uh, it's not an easy thing. And um, well, then I talked with one, one, let's say kind of mentor from you and woman. He's a, he's a Dutch guy who I met on my first trip to New York. And he told me that he did for you and woman a white out speak out campaign in uh, five African countries, South Africa, Botswana, Namibia, I think Mozambique. And that to that way, he, he, he was riding with, uh, I think with 30 guys of the Harley, Mo Harley Motorson Club, mm -hmm. and then speaking out for gender equality. He said it was an amazing way to raise awareness. They got a lot of publicity and they, um, they really got some results. So I thought, okay, well, this is something I could combine in my plans and what I was already in my mind. And the Netherlands is no well known for cycling. So I thought, hey, if I can combine the two, then uh, there might be something possible. One day is a youth consultation in the capital. So bringing together young people, policy makers, people from UN entities, media, uh, the Dutch embassies. So that way we thought, okay, now it's not only during this event that young people have the chance to speak out and to go into deeper detail about what they find important, but at the very same moment, you, you create a sort of coalition or network that once the, the new agenda is adopted in the end of September, the, the implementation and the monitoring and holding your governments accountable is far more important. The second thing was um, visiting youth-led field projects. So what's, going, what's already going on there? What can we learn from best practices? What are challenges they face and, and share it with us? So that's what we did on the, did on the second and third day. And then we thought, okay, well, but if we are only going to capital cities, then we still don't reach out to this one person or to the 100 person. Maybe we go, instead of one, we go to 10 person, but still 90 person is missing. So how are we going to get this? And that's why the bicycle comes in. If you go by plane or by car, you bypass so many people, you miss so many stories. And even if you then get out of the car, then it's... Um, um, then there is a, a big gap, a, lot of, a, a big distance, let's say that way. If I get out of an AC car in the middle of the Sahara or in the Congo rainforest, people will look at you like, hey, no, this is a white man getting out of an AC car. They, they, it's like an un, you create an, directly an unequal situation. So a lot of people read it on Facebook and then they are looking at you, okay, what is Facebook? What is the UN headquarters? What is all of this? And then <laughs> you realize, okay, this is exactly the bridge we want to 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 build. Mm -hmm. and at the very same moment, it's those people which voice we want to to have there in New York, and it's at the, the levels where where uh, this make an impact or where this to be heard. But at that moment, we were not aware. I mean, I mean, we knew it, but the situation in the middle sea was not that that big. And then three or four weeks later, we cycled into Mauritania and uh, I think somewhere the TV was on and we watched the BBC and then we read and we saw that uh, thousands of people were floating in the Mediterranean Sea. Many had passed away. I think at the moment we put it on, it was like about six, 600 or 650. And then it's, it's, it remains no longer, you know, something far from your beds or from some far from your comfort zone, but then it's real, you know, we get this picture of Mohammed, you get the feeling and it's, it, it, it really touched upon you. So there was those those moments that you realize, okay, um, I've been in New York, I've been often as the, the open working groups or the SDG note uh, negotiations, but then it remains just the goals on a paper, you know? And when you go now out and you get these personal stories, then those goals are no longer on paper or far away, but they come alive. 
And I think then the good thing was that uh, two or three days later, the Dutch mission at the UN organized a side event with the UN Special and Foreign Youths and all the ambassadors of countries we cycled through. And we joined in through Skype. And then we could directly um, tell the more general stuff we heard, as well as those personal stories. And then our min Minister of Trade and Development was also there. And the ambassadors from the, I think from Ghana it was, he directly um, raised this point like, okay, yeah, but we should, like in Europe now, a lot of countries are thinking about, okay, how can we increase border control? How can we strengthen Fort Europe? And he said, okay, but what we not, we should not be looking at like building walls, but instead, how can we um, build bridges? And um, so there was this lively discussion, and then three or four weeks later, we read in the biggest newspaper of the Netherlands that our Minister of Trade and Development had appointed 50 million euro to foster youth employment in the North African countries to make to uh, ensure that they are not thinking about going, but that they can uh, think about a, a life within those countries. Not, and we are not claiming that that uh, that we made him making this decision, but we were part of of a movement or part of people who was like bringing these personal stories to life. Remind those who are signing the agreements that um, hey, this is this is for who we are doing it, and with yeah. that we we uh, we might not directly influence policy, but I think with just this reminder and having this on top of your mind, that whatever decision you make, I think at the end of the day it, it will be a better decision.